the flower of life. These are Hebraic concepts and we need to reclaim our heritage and our understanding and we need to clean it up and throw out people who misuse and abuse God's knowledge and understanding for their own basically evil, selfish, carnal whatevers, okay? Because this is a thing. God has set it up. He Remember he said, it's, the Kabbalah is talking there, that there is a whole system in place which is cause and effect, okay? Some people call it the law of attraction. You can call the Bible, called you reap what you sow, okay? These are, okay, so, and it works in every level, okay? You touch a hot stove, you're going to burn your finger, okay? You open yourself up. Okay, let's see if I can get this out there. You open yourself up to a bad influence. Okay, it says evil associations corrupts good morals. You're going to get burned in the, in the category of your soul. You're going to get hurt. You're going to, you know, a negative. Let me put it this way. Everything you do is going to have a negative or a positive impact, not only on you, but it's this whole concept of the ripple effect, okay? And the ripple effect they're finding out now understanding turns into chaos after a while. That's why we're where we are today, <laughs> okay? Now, understanding that, the, okay, so it, physically we know that there are laws in the universe, but, but in the soul category, a lot of this is the concept of the blessings and the curses. If, Yahweh said, if you obey me, you will have blessings. You will... You know, it'll be like flowing, and he uses the words, you know, um, uh, honey and, how does it go? You know, bread, wine, and oil. You know, you'll just be overflowing in all sorts of categories of, with blessing. Not only blessing of the womb, but blessing of the land, and blessing of, you know, financial blessing, and emotional blessing, all these things, okay? If you disobey, there will be curses. In other words, there are consequences and reproductions, and it's built into the system. This is why it's it's built in. God almost doesn't have to. The only thing he has to do is if is 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 give greater one way or the other. This is he does have options, and I have to say this. He, well, I don't want to get into that. All right, let me just say this. Whenever whatever we speak or even think, and this is what they know now. Okay, because they're so far advanced now in understanding all the different waves, okay? The gamma rays, how they operate. The gamma rays, the, um, the, the alpha waves, the beta waves, the delta waves, the kappa waves. These are all these 10, these waves of, of um, you know, like there are waves, that, beta waves of conceptual thought, of alpha waves of imagery perceptions. Theta waves of energetic activity, delta waves when we sleep for restful abiding. There are kappa waves that are, are part of our circulation. So there are all these waves. There's all these, you know, a lot of times they call them rivers because they, they move. This is movement. This is why angels move, forces move. These things are not static. They're constantly in motion, but they're, they're wired in such a way that if you're flowing with it, if you're going with the flow, God's flow, in obedience, in blessing, you will receive peace. It, it'll be peace like a river. It'll flow with you, okay? If you kick against the pricks, like Paul said, it's not going to flow with you. It's going to get difficult. It's going to get hard. That's how the system is rigged, and these are deep physics. What people understand, our soul life has as much physics to it as anything. Let me put the, when you, our speech and thought is electro, okay, whenever we speak or think, we create electromagnetic neural pathways within the neural matrices of our brains. And these in turn imprint on the dimensional layer. Now, this person calls it synchronic energy, or you can call it Bina, or you can call it this overlay. Remember, God is, he's omnipresent, omnipresent. He has a layer of himself sort of on everything, an imprint. So if you touch on it, it's like it leaves an imprint. It's like, you know, if, you, if, the, if the doorbell's rigged, you know, and you open it, and it's like all of a sudden, ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling, it's the same thing. 
And God, all of God said, you, you step out there in any of these energy fields and, and it rings, it moves, a vibration happens, you know, the information flow, it goes somewhere, okay? He is keeping track of everything. <laughs> and think of it, okay? That's why he says he's going to have books and he's going to open them up and he's going to show you your whole life. There are angels that are, this is what they say, recording everything that is thought and said and done whether you're alone, you think you can hide, or you know it's happening in a mob, whatever, it doesn't matter. God is recording it, and He is, um, and and there are natural, built into the system ways in which there's a consequence or a blessing of all of these. Like we make imprints. This is a, what do they call that? They call, um, a neural imprint. Okay, now, now why would Okay, now this is what's sort of interesting. It is, it is no different from if you up... Now, so our thoughts and speech is out there. Once you have a thought, once you speak something... So that's why it says life and death are in the power of the tongue. We just don't really understand. Once it's out there, it's out there. And it's, this, is, it, this is so interesting in today's world, okay, in this election as we're having this whole little thing of WikiLeaks. Think about this. It is no different from if you uploaded your thoughts to the Internet. They would be out there in the universal forever, accessible to anyone, anywhere. Now, who would be searching online using keywords to find those thoughts? How do you think Satan, the evil inclination, you know, gets to us? You know, what, what might trip me up isn't going to trip you up. So how do they know? How do they know what to put in, in a many different languages? What would trip me up? This is what's so interesting. Because the law of attraction, and because, you know, it's something like searching for keywords to find out if, if there's a reaction. I mean, this thing, is, it's so interesting on so many levels. But anyways, in a sp okay, in, in the spiritual world, it's as if you, you published every idea on YouTube and never, um, and anyone could search for it. Now, the, the, the blueprint for synchron, and I'm just going to call it spiritual energy because I don't really like the word synchronic energy, whatever you want to call it, being in Hulk, my wisdom, you know, whatever. The spiritual energy of God, the light of God, that the, 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 functions at the, at the, the speed, faster than quote unquote our speed of light, um, was encoded into the Torah, into the Kabbalah. This understanding, these secrets, we were not set adrift in the universe without a lifeboat or a guidebook. We just forgot it was there along and how to read it. Much of the understanding of the ancients, of the physics of the world that they are finding out is true. Like I said, 5,700 years ago, Abraham knew all this. You know, we're discovering it today in quantum, naming it new things and acting like, you know, we just discovered the wheel. Well, we didn't, okay? Um, the keys given to us at the dawn of creation, and this is part of the story that Adam was given books when he left. He was given understanding. He had tons of understanding because he was made in the image of God. Okay, and much of it um, he kept, he took with it. It was handed down generationally. Now, let me say this too. The system is designed to properly interact with our human mechanism. So in other words, God knew exactly what he was doing. Every system relates to every other system. What we do in the body affects our soul life and is known in the spirit world, okay? And this is one of the reasons why, especially... Um, Okay, the system is designed to properly interact with our human mechanisms. Now, this is the thing. Remember that little Sunday school song? Remember little eyes what you see. Remember little ears what you hear. There's something in that. This is part of the understanding. The six gates. We see things. Our eyes are like barcodes. They just read images. <laughs> They're like scanners. You add to this, there's called six gates. There are two eyes, we have two ears, we have a nose and a mouth, and there's a sixth sense, okay? So in other words, in the ancients, these are the gates. This is how the system is wired, okay? So in the physical world, is information, as you, you of your own free will, access, information, food, emotions, uh, thoughts, um, 
new languages, whatever it is, okay, it, and you, you access these things, they come into you through your quote unquote, your gates, your ears, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. You'd be surprised how much smell they're finding. I mean, is we just take it totally for granted. Smell is one of the main, um, it's just a hugely sophisticated, I mean, also when think of dogs, and I take my dog for it, it's amazing how they smell, I don't know what they're doing, but smell is insanely, they are wired insanely to function according to smell. <laughs> Anyways, um, I have, I know I have to keep moving. I, this is where I want to just go really quick, okay? But I guess what I want to say is I, we need people, okay? Like people are unpacking the flat. We need now the cutting edge, whoopsie, cutting edge Christians, messianics, I guess the, the elect. We need the cutting edge elect, in my opinion now, to stop being afraid of Kabbalah with a K. Our heritage of Jewish mysticism, and I think, see, the word mysticism has a bad connotation to us because we don't really, it's been kind of re- defined to us. Mystical means it's just in elements, you know, the understanding of how the other worlds work, okay? Um, you know, how the soul relates to the spirit and how the spirit relates to the body. Okay, these are things. That's what is meant, okay? These are deeply, um, these are some really, the we have, the Kabbalah has an understanding, an accurate understanding of this, and we need to get in there the, the keys of the kingdom are in there. The keys of how the words have been encoded and encrypted, and this understanding is there. But the bigger thing we need to understand is a lot of this, this stuff that's been repackaged to us, okay? This whole, you know, the tree of, uh, you know, this is called the flower of life. A lot of this stuff this has been repackaged to us, like that all these other cultures have all this information, like, oh, wow, look at the Chinese or the Buddhists or the Taoists, you know, they really... It's so, in the Christian, and, and make us feel like we're at a deficit, especially Western Christianity, because we don't really, we can't really talk the talk, except in a very intellectual way that just doesn't satisfy the modern, um, educated people who are the kids steeped in physics today. Because I mean, but we, we, if we would just reclaim our heritage, we would be able to not only dialogue, but to lead the discussion, okay? And this is, this is my goal, but, um, because see, let me just do this. Okay. So the flower of life, let me see if I can unpack this really quickly. Let me say, let me read two quick things here. The central picture in Kabbalah. Okay. Is, I've said, is the tree of life. Okay. Now I went through that whole thing. The, the tree of life. This is a huge, every, every culture really. And you should understand the tree of life. You have the branches and the, the trunk and the root system and everything. Is the, contains the 10 sephirot, okay, and many more, the 22 paths, and there's the names of Yahweh, and we'll get into all this, the numbers, the letters. The, this design was derived from concentric circles, okay, which is in the Bahar, which is another one of the ancient esoteric texts. The concept of the tree is to represent how universal energy, we'll call it spiritual energy, God in the beginning, with beginning, actually says, with the highest level, you know, that God is spirit, he began this whole thing, okay? Transforms, is transformed by emanations into the world. The tree is about the manifested universe, our physicality, okay? Our whole, did it just poof here, okay? I don't know how much time you give it. It doesn't, it didn't just evolve, it didn't just poof, okay? It was deliberately methodically, linearly planned out and emanated from the mind of God, okay? In the Kabbalistic view, it's based on three voids or unmanifested worlds from which comes the carnal world. So you do have the higher worlds that are behind the physical world, okay? And this goes all the way into the macro and into the micro, okay, world. We have to understand um, some of this stuff. Now, there was a word I, because, let me see, there are names of Torah. This is, see, the Torah, I guess what I want to say, that the Torah is, 
is especially, you know, it is such a scientific treaty if we can reclaim, and I, science in terms of what God has told us that we can and know, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> to a lot of the other side, you know, they think, oh, they use, they manipulate a lot of the force and call it magic, oh, you know, well, we, while we don't engage in magic, this is the, this is what is really, and I wish I could find this little thing I have really quick. Uh, but in other words, we are to, our system of, I don't even want to use that word. We are supposed to call upon the name of the Lord. And he, in turn, <laughs> will do wonders for us, okay? We are not to take it upon ourselves to manipulate forces that are beyond our, really, beyond our scope of understanding these things. We are to leave it up to him. And, oh my gosh, there was such a great, uh, that I wanted to read and I just can't find it. We are to wait upon the Lord and let him, this way I mean, fight our battles for us in this thing, okay? But what doesn't mean we need to be stupid. We, we're to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We are to understand what we can know and has been given to us is for us. All right? So let's just go back to this concept of the tree of life, what I want to say. People will understand this whole thing is very mathematical. It's very geometric. It's very, you know, you get into music. You get into uh, tones. I mean, let me just... No matter what discipline you look at and study deeply, you will find order, you will find symmetry, you will find beauty, you will find complementary opposites, you will find a system that is designed for a create in, in unbelievably functionality, okay? And it was all designed, that's what he's saying, you know, it's all designed by Yahweh God. He, there is an intelligent creator behind all this. And you study nature, that's our first line of defense to understand some of the underlying principles. Now, the tree of life is, a, is an ancient, you'll find this all over the ancient world. I mean, they have found it in, you know, in Iran and Iraq and in India and in China. And, you know, I think it's probably been found in, I'm pretty sure, in Mesoamerica. Okay, and it is, this is the understanding. The... And I won't go into it, but it, it's, a, it's a geometric pattern that is just in everything. It's a, it, this is how you make the world. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. This is how you make matter. This is how you take the active, the male, and the passive, the female, how you combine them, and how you get a dimension, okay? And this is, because they knew this, they would use words. Now, I want to go through, because we don't really understand what they're talking about, but they're talking about this understanding. So the seed of life, okay, is what I've said before, the male sows the seed in, into, and the, the woman, the female, the earth, has the egg of life. So the seed of life, which is the, and the egg of life, combine, they make what's called the flower of life, okay? So this thing starts in a center here. It starts with the crown. Hokma and Bina come together, the male and the female. They begin a cycle. They create a flower. That's what the first concentric thing is here. That creates a fruit, okay? The fruit of life. And this is why from every level, Paul can say, you know, for out of the heart are the issues of life. Our character is our fruit. This is all templates. These are all archetypes that are following the exact same pattern. Um, it is in the fruit. <laughs> when it got down finally to the manifestation of the fruit. Remember Adam and Eve, they, she ate a fruit? <laughs> What they're telling you is, is in the deeper understanding of the, really, in the physics of the thing. Where the thing originally got tripped up and affected in us. When you have a, I mean, just most people who grow and in a garden, especially if you have a fruit, a vegetable, uh, um, a, a, an apple, okay? 
just before you get the apple, you have the flower, okay? Um, and then it's just a process that's repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated, and you can make whole worlds in this process. But this is absolutely sound, solid, geometric, mathematical, reproducible, and it is foundation, okay? And this, you see, you know, today it comes on a lot of things of sacred geometry. This is the Fibonacci sequence. This is, the, this is the imprint, the handiwork of God. But I'll tell you something. This whole system sticks in the lower seven, okay? If you don't, and this is where the, um, the pagans went wrong in the ancient world and people are going wrong today. If you don't understand that this whole process was originated and enacted out of the mind of God, you've missed the boat. Okay, and you're going to miss the boat, okay? Because eventually this whole thing is going to close up, he's going to roll up, and he's going to unfold it again with a whole new creation. Because when I say the thing is rigged, God has been keeping track every imprint you've ever made of energy on any, in any level, spiritual energy, psychic energy, or, you know, just red physical energy. It's being recorded. It's got your name on it. <laughs> You're, you're being weighed in the balances. You know, all this terminology that we hear that we just think is nice little intellectual parlayings words to throw around. No, there are physics to this thing, people. I mean, there are physics. God is going to back up his word. He's always, let me tell you, he backs up. <laughs> let me say, you know, they say to have backup for your stuff. Well, he's got a backup of a backup of a backup system. He's got that system backed up by another system, backed up by another system. Nothing gets passed. <laughs> So on that note, I do want to, because um, this can get really deep. And, and you know, there's a lot of in my personal study and understanding. I, I, I just find this, it, it does, it, because of understanding the flat earth and the enclosed system that we're in, it's an enclosed system, um, the fear of the Lord has grown in my life. Because I understand there is no place I can go. <laughs> you know what? I might as well hunker down. I might as well obey Torah so that I can go with the flow, his flow, all right, and receive blessings in my life, okay? The saddest thing that has been uh, thrown on our, especially our younger generations today, is that everything is relative, that the do as thou wilt concept of the Luciferians that, you know, just do whatever, you know, it, it, nothing could be further from the truth. And this is why things are breaking down. We're entering chaos. People's lives on every level. Disease is up. Everything. War, pestilence. <laughs> we can't even have an election with duty. I mean, everything is, 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 you know, our economy, everything. Okay? The only way out of this is to get into the system that God set up where he said, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves. Okay, that's the first thing. Humble ourselves and acknowledge that we have really, probably a little bit like the apocalypse of Baruch says, we have trodden down the earth and we have used the creation unrighteously, which is not just, you know, I'm not just talking, um, you know, green earth or, you know, ecology. I am talking about the fact, the laws of God, how we treat our neighbor, you love your neighbors yourself. You love God. These fundamental laws have been broken and broken and broken and broken and broken to the point of the, you know. Okay, we need to um, call upon the name of the Lord. We need to get back the, uh, the fear of the Lord, and we need to understand that he will work for us. But he has rigged this, you know, it's got to be on his terms. Okay, so in that note, I just want to say um, shalom, God bless you, and um, Really, I do believe, and I pray, if you, you, the call upon the name of the Lord, because he is built into the system, compassion, mercy, forgiveness, and justice. And it's all yours. We have a good father. In his name I say, shalom. <laughs>